Hi, I'm Jason Hedin, the CEO of Sea Air Compressors. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about all the features that come standard on our compressors. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our fully packaged units. All two-stage pumps create heat at the first and second stage of compression. We have an 8-foot intercooler between the first and second stage to cool the air down as much as possible for maximum efficiency in the second stage of compression. We have a large, easy to read, liquid filled air pressure gauge for better accuracy. And our serial tag has commonly needed information such as oil capacity, air filter part number, and our phone number. So call us if you have any questions, we're more than happy to help you. All of our units that need a magnetic starter have a magnetic starter installed at the factory. So you will never need to add a magnetic starter to one of our compressors. All of our single phase units come equipped to operate on either 208 or 230 volts. Obviously we make three phase units that can operate on 208, 230 or 460 depending on your requirements. Another feature, instead of having to reach all the way into the tank to drain the condensate with a petcock, we have a ball valve that's easily accessible. Now let's talk about fully packaged compressors. The purpose of a fully packaged compressor is to remove as much water vapor as possible so that you have the water condensate going down your drain instead of running through your tools and ruining them. If we look at our compressor, what we have is a very large aftercooler. It's 19 inches wide and 16 inches tall. That's very large compared to other brands. The temperature coming into the aftercooler is about 450 degrees. As the air flows through it, the temperature drops all the way down to about 15 degrees above ambient temperature. When this happens, you're turning the water vapor into condensate. The condensate then runs down this drain and into the bottom of the tank. Now that we have all the condensate or water in the bottom of the tank, how do we get it out? There's three ways to get it out. One way is to use a manual tank drain. The problem with a manual tank drain is that people forget to drain their tanks and they end up with a tank full of water. The second option is to use an electronic tank drain. The problem with an electronic tank drain is that not only do you let the water out, but you also let a lot of the compressed air out, and the compressed air is very expensive, so that ends up being more costly. The third and best way is to use a zero loss pneumatic tank drain. The benefit of a zero loss pneumatic tank drain is you're not letting any of the air out, you're only letting the water out. Plus it's automatic so you don't have to remember to do it. And that's what we use. Mm -hmm. 